All right, on to understanding system management RAM. Well, it's so simple. It just goes from SMBase up to SMBase plus SRAM size. There you go, that's SRAM. Got it? Good. All right, done with this video. Now we're actually continuing. All right, so SMRAM refers to the entire range or ranges where the system management interrupt handler code can be located. Now we showed that the start of SMRAM is given by SMBase, and that is a private CPU internal register. It's basically a register that you don't normally have a way to just directly read or write. And each core is going to have its own SMBase. Now when a system management interrupt fires, the entry point for code execution is always going to be found at SMBase plus hex 8000. And additionally, when you cause a system management interrupt, it's going to need to save the state of the CPU so that it can get back to whatever it was doing after you leave SMM. So consequently, the pre-SMI register context is saved into SMRAM on entry and it's restored on exit. So in our SMRAM space, we start at SMBase and SMBase on startup defaults to hex 30,000. So it can be relocated to somewhere else as we've shown previously, and it typically will be, but that's where it's going to start. So if it starts at hex 30,000, then the entry point is going to be 30,000 plus 8,000. Now, practically speaking, how this is actually achieved is that SMBase defaults as a CS, you know, base address in the code segment, the shadow portion of the code segment. It defaults to 3000, and then the IP is set to 8000. So that's the first use for the SMRAM, which is the code for the SMI handler. But we said there also is data that's stored there, specifically the pre-SMM save state. So that's saved at SMBase plus 8000 plus 7FF. So unfortunately, we're going to be using this convention that Intel uses when they describe things in their data sheets. Instead of just giving you SMBase plus FFFF, they say SMBase plus 8000 plus 7FF, which is really just SMBase plus FFFF. So anyways, if the processor was executing in 32-bit mode before the system management interrupt fired, then the information will range from there down to here. So it's a total of hex 200 bytes. And so this is the description of what that looks like in terms of what registers are saved in what order. But an interesting thing to call attention to is the fact that the SMBase itself is also saved to this save state. And it says that it's writable. So the SMBase is stored on system management interrupt and it's always stored to the exact same location, whether it's 32 bits or 64 bits, stored to SMBase plus FEF8. So previously when we saw just abstractly about you know, compatible memory spaces and the relocation of SMRAM, basically what's gonna happen is you're going to go into SMM, the SMBase that defaults to hex 30,000 is going to be saved to that save state area. And then the system management interrupt handler is going to say, hey, looks like this is my you know, first ever entry into system management mode. I think I'm gonna go ahead and relocate system management base to some other location. But because SMBase is sort of a weird register that you don't have a direct sort of read and write access to, the way that that first SMI handler actually changes it is that it overwrites the saved copy in the SMRAM save state and then upon doing the resume, it's going to be, you know, the change will occur upon resume. Just like we showed in those previous animated diagrams. So if the processor was executing in 64-bit mode at the time that the SMI fires, the save state is going to range again from SMBase plus FFFF, and now this time it's going to be hex 400 bytes. So it's going to go down to SMBase plus 8000 plus 7C00. So hex 400 bytes stored there, which is what you would expect. You know, 64-bit mode has larger registers, so double the space. Okay, so here's what the data sheets say about what the save state looks like for 64 bits. And, you know, it's more stuff, but conveniently, Intel does save the SMBase at the same address. So it is either SMBase plus 8000 plus 7EF8 or SMBase plus FEF8, however you want to think of it. So 32 or 64 bits, the same value is stored there. It says double word, so it's a 32-bit value. This means that SMBase cannot actually be above the four gigabyte range, and that's just fine with us.
Now the total size of the SMRAM is going to depend on which location the BIOS vendor has actually placed it in. There are multiple locations that we'll learn about in the next section, and they have different constraints on their sizes. Now because we said that all of the cores have their own copy of SMBase, you shouldn't have all of those cores pointing at the exact same SMBase. That would cause a problem when you enter into SMM. All of a sudden, everything would be at the same offset and all of their save states would start clobbering each other because obviously each core is probably at some completely different address, completely different register state, and so they would smash each other. So necessarily a BIOS is responsible for setting these up at some offset from each other. For instance, here we just showed it as hex 1000 offset. And so there will be a different entry point for each core and there will be a different save state for each core. And practically speaking, it may be the case that the BIOS vendor decides to make it so that you know only a single core actually runs code and the rest of them just sort of dead loop and wait for that first core to end. But it kind of is up to the BIOS manufacturer how they want to do it.